Hello there, I'm Black Bright and welcome to my channel. If it's the first time you're passing through, you can like, subscribe and all those things. Um, today I decided to talk about a newspaper headline that caught my eye. It was the Jamaican Beacon and it said um, Jamaica is looking to legalise, well they're working hard to legalise obia. And I thought to myself, is this for real? Obia needs to be legalised? Anyway, I'm like, let me see what else it's saying. Anyway, at first I wanted to see the definition because, you know, I'm born in the UK. I've heard about Obia. When I think about Obia, it's about, you know, the rumours I heard about Obia is about man tying woman and woman tying man and that kind of stuff. That was my first recollection of Obia. And, you know, about witchcraft and voodoo and stuff like that. And, you know, people cutting off um, chickens' heads and putting the blood around people's houses and all that kind of stuff. And something bad is supposed to happen in the family. Or... I've never heard anything good. I've never heard Obia being used for healing or a blessing. But maybe, um, depending on the person's interpretation of what obia is to them, it does heal them. I mean, if they go there believing that their partner is unfaithful, which a lot of them go to obia people for, and then the obia man finds out that, you know, he is unfaithful and it gives that woman peace of mind or it gives that man peace of mind, then maybe they'll feel as though they've been healed. I don't know. They could end up, you know, going crazy. But anyway, let me read you the Wikipedia definition of obia. According to Wikipedia, obia is a system of spiritual and healing practices developed among enslaved West Africans. Somebody called Diane Patton has contended that what constitutes obia in Jamaica has been constructed by white society, particularly law enforcement. And then BBC News in 13th of August 2013, they said enslaved Africans brought spiritual practices to the Caribbean that included folk healing and a belief in magic for good and for evil. But Obia has been outlawed in Jamaica since 1760. However, it has been decades since anyone was convicted. The Obia law passed in Jamaica in eight, nine, sorry, 1898 and remains in force with a few minor amendments as of today. But that is, I don't think they realise now, when because that is 2013, that it's actually being repealed and they want it to be legalised. Can you imagine? legalizing something called obia <coughs> sorry about that well all i can say is that i decided to call my mum and i said mum what's obia my brother talked to me about them thing there i i, I the devil is the only people who don't work she went into one honestly she said you know um belief heals and belief kills so then I called up somebody else because she wasn't too open about it as far as she's concerned. She don't want to have nothing to do with it. She believes in God. God is the only person she deals with. And she said, obvious for people who don't believe in God, they believe that man can do certain things. So in not saying anything at all, she said quite a lot. So for her, obia is about, because a lot of obia people, they claim that they can do things that lawyers can't do, that um, pharmacists and GPs can't do. You know, that's what they claim. So people go to them for their supernatural powers or their alleged supernatural powers, depending on whether or not you believe in them. And, you know, as that, as ye shall believe, ye shall achieve. So a lot of people, if they believe in it hard enough, things will happen. I heard of a story where this boy was at school and he was such a good scholar and some kids um, were so jealous of him. Anyway, apparently they did obia to him. I don't know what they did, but the next day they found him hanging from a tree 
talk, talking foolishness. And that guy was stupid ever since in turn four. So I don't know if these are stories. I heard about the rolling calf. Apparently it's this calf that comes out at night and comes down a mountain or a hill with all these chains rattling. I can't say. Some people say it's an old folks tale. Some people say it's what the elderly told their children in order to make them too frightened to go out at night and to keep them in their bed. Who knows? Like I said, some people believe strongly in it. Strong, strong, strong. I had a friend when I was living in America and as we were walking up, I think in Queens, we were walking up um, Queens Avenue and there was this sign outside, um, healing or, you know, get rid of evil spirits or something like that. I forget what the exact wording was, but she said, oh, I'm going in. So she went in and um, I don't know if I stayed outside or what I did, but I remember her telling me that she had to pee into a bowl and all the water went black. And now she has to pay this woman, goodness knows how many hundreds of dollars to get rid of the evil spirit. And she did. She kept going back until she got so fed up of paying the woman that she stopped. But it's that kind of thing. When I started doing this video this evening, my camera on the laptop would not come on. The screen just went blue. Now... I got through, I got to say the title of the video I'm talking about, and then it just froze, and it would not allow me to get back on it. Now, if I believed in Obia, I would say it was the doppy them, or is Obia why I can't do my video? That's how I would be thinking. Instead, I'm just saying, you know, it's a fault with the with my with the battery or something's wrong with the laptop. I don't know, but I wouldn't put it down to Obia. But people who believe in Obia believe that everything that's bad that happens to them happens because of someone else, and that they need to go to the Obia man to get it sort, sorted out. If they have problems, they go to the Obia man. Some people even commit crimes and they think by going to the Obia man, they won't, have to, they won't go to jail. That's what the Obia is. It's like, like my mother said, it's not having faith in God. It's having faith in a human being who claims to have supernatural powers. And it's based on your belief in that individual, the outcome that you receive. Anyway. Let me just give you some history of it. Um, this I took this from the Jamaican Observer yesterday. This is how hot on the press this news is. Um, back in 2012-2013, an intriguing discussion arose in Parliament and the wider society surrounding Obia, which remained illegal up until recently, although it is widely practised and is indeed embedded in Jamaican culture. Back then, the discussion flowed from the successful initiative by the then Justice Minister, Mr. Clark Mark Goldin, to abolish whipping as a form of punishment in the Jamaican correctional system. As a part of his approach, Mr. Golding had to initiate an amendment to the Obia Act, which was among legislation allowing flogging. Senators from opposing sides, Mr. Lambert Brown, People's National Party, and Mr. Tom Tavares Vinson, Jamaica Labour Party, suggested that the designation of Obia as a crime should be removed from the law books. They argued with justification that the Obia Act is a relic of colonialism dating back well in excess of a hundred years to a time when the Jamaican ruling classes found it useful to suppress the cultural identity of the black underclass. So, when we're thinking about Obia, these are the people who advertise that they can solve people's problems, be they physical, spiritual or otherwise. And those, the people from the JMP and PNP, JLP and PNP, they don't want... Um, or they didn't want back then, and they still don't want it now, Obia to be illegal. 
they want it legalized. So they're really hard pressing for this. And it's about to go through. Um, I just typed this up. The Obia man tends to advertise himself as having supernatural or superior capabilities. The claim that they are capable of doing things that a doctor cannot do, a lawyer cannot do, and other persons cannot do. But somehow, were you to visit them, they can do it. O operators can be charged under the OBIA Act for practicing, but they hardly ever do. Medical, practice, sorry, ma medical practitioners who are not qualified and registered are not eligible to practice medicine and are breaking the law if they do so. Under the Pharmacy Act, only registered pharmacists should be distributing medication, but the Obia man makes his own medication and distributes it, therefore breaching the Pharmacy Act. University of the West Indies lecturer, Dr. Ajamu Nangweya, wonders why Obia is criminalised while other similar practices from elsewhere are ignored. He says, that's something that is very troubling in our country, where the tendency in our culture that anything too black is not good. And Obia is one of the blackest religions, he said. It seems, to, it seems that Mrs. Brown and Tavares Finson need to follow through on the pledge that they made in 2013 and spur a debate so that Jamaicans can come to a proper conclusion on obia and other practices that profess to operate in the supernatural. So that was the Jamaican Beacon. No, that was the Jamaican Observer. I'm just going to um, take out a little bit from the Jamaican Beacon, uh, who said for hundreds of years, Jamaicans have been prevented by law from practicing obia, a belief system with similar similarities to Haiti's voodoo. Now, campaigners and practitioners believe they have a chance to overturn the law. Why would you want to overturn the law? But it just shows you how many people believe in it, doesn't it? Um... The Obia law passed in Jamaica in 1898 remains in force with a few minor amendments today. I've got the actual amendment in law here. Depending on how long this goes in, I'll decide whether or not I want to read it. Just so you can hear the actual law. Um, according to the Obia Act, Obia shall be deemed to be one of and the same as meaning Mayalism which is described as Jamaican folk religion focused on the powers of African ancestors. On the other hand, Obia is a system of spiritual and healing practices developed among the enslaved in West Africa. Lawma lawmakers yesterday, which was the 6th, the 5th of June, blocked a proposed increase in fines for persons practicing Obia. So people used to be fined. For Obia. Now they're blocking that. This is a mid-revelation that plans to plans are afoot to legalize the practice in Jamaica. Obia has been illegal here for centuries, but it is still widely practiced. And law enforcers often turn a blind eye to Obia practitioners. Cabinet submission from as far back as 1975 have wanted the Obia law scrapped. A successful bid has been made to have Obia removed from the list of offences likely to attract higher fines. So if you practice Obia and somebody has a problem with it, they're not going to be fined. Or they're not going to go to prison, they're not going to be done anything because they're legalising it. Under this, they'll be able to advertise the practice by the looks of things. Under the Law Reform Amendment of Penalties Act, the proposed increase for OBIA-related offences would have been from $100 to $1 million, and from $40 to $500,000. Lawmakers unanimously supported the proposed increases for all fines listed except for OBIA. That's lawmakers. Why do lawmakers, why are the lawmakers so interested in OBIA? It's most bizarre, isn't it? Minister of Justice Delroy Truck. 
Minister of Justice Delroy Chuck in the House of Representatives yesterday, June the 4th, expressed surprise that the OBIA Act still exists. Members of Parliament for Clarendon Central, Mike Henry, told the House why he does not support penalties for OBIA and why he will back future plans to have it legalised. He says, you can't deny me my African religious rights. OBIA should never have been illegal at any point, any time, anywhere, he asserted, adding, I can't agree to increase the penalties to my religious rights. Honestly, what next? I mean, for religious people, people just think that's got to do with the devil. You know what I mean? And you've got people. And the thing is, is that when you think it involves blood, it involves a whole heap of things. And I don't know what they do. I remember, I don't know how many people saw, you know, people used to have these dolls and they used to stick pins in it. And wherever they stuck the pin, the person would feel the pain. You know, it's all things like that. Anyway, the amendment, the amendment to the Act, this is 2013. It's not very long. I'll just breathe, um, read it quickly. An Act to amend the OBIA Act to abolish whipping as a penalty for certain criminal offences and for connected matters. This was enacted on the 22nd of March 2013. Be it enacted by the Queen's Most Excellent Majesty, by and with the advice and consent of the Senate and House of Representatives of Jamaica, and by the authority of the same as follows. 1. The Act may be cited as the OBIA Amendment Act 2013 and shall be read and, and construed as one with the OBIA Act, hereinafter referred to as the Principal Act and all amendments thereto. Section 3 of the Principal Act is, in, is amended by deleting all of the words appearing immediately after the words 12 months. Um, section 4 of the Principal Act is amended by deleting all of the words appearing immediately after the word six months. Nothing in this Act shall, except as, as specified in subsection 2, be construed as affecting any sentence of whipping duly carried out pursuant to section 3 or 4 of the Principal Act prior to the commencement date. A sentence pursuant to section 3 or 4 of the Principal Act, which is handed down prior to the commencement date and imposes whipping as the whole or part of the sentence, shall not, to the extent of the whipping only, be carried out in whole or part on or after the commencement date. In this section, commencement date means the date of which this Act comes into operation, which was the 13th of March, 21st of March 2013. This Act binds the Crown. Passed in the Senate this 15th day of February 2013, with one amendment, Stanley St. J. Redwood, President, passed in the House of Representatives, on this 26th day of February 2013, Michael A. Peart, in the presence of the Clerk to the House of Parliament. So it looks like, in the OBIA Act, they had a whipping clause. Why would they have a whipping clause in OBIA Act? Oh, it's beyond me, it's beyond me. Like I said, what do I know about it? I don't really want to know much about it, but I can't believe in 2019 they're legalising an OBIA Act. Why is it an act? Why did they have to put an act in place? They had to put, an, they must have had to put it in place for a reason. What was the original reason for putting the act in place? Why now that reason can be repeal, repealed or revoked? I mean, there has to be some constraints in any, any, anything. 
And I think when, like they was talking about medication, I mean, if they're, if they're using different kinds, if they're using blood, what are the health risks? If they're asking you to bring blood, where they're getting the blood from? I mean, we don't know what they're doing. So there has to, the, probably that's why the act was put in place, to protect people. But, oh no, we have heads of, we have lawmakers who want this, this Obia Act to be re revoked and they don't want it in place. They want Obia legalised. What does that tell you about the state of the world? That's all for now. Bye-bye.